oxidation and reduction right so when oxidation and reduction happens together that is simultaneously we call them as redox reaction what is oxidation losing of electrons right so zinc loses two electrons and forms zn2 plus ions right because of electrical energy chemical energy is uh, produced what is that they are electrolytic cell right so when the external energy is more than 1.1 volt the electrochemical cell behaves as electrolytic cell Hello everyone this is Ambli Unikrishnan from the department of chemistry Vidyashram school of excellence Mysore so today we are back with chapter 2 of your syllabus that is electrochemistry so we are beginning with a new chapter today right so today in this session what and all we are going to discuss yes so introduction to electrochemistry right what we will be studying in this chapter and then redox reactions which you are already familiar with right and then electrochemical cell and daniel cell and the representation how you can represent different cells we will be studying in this session so beginning with electrochemistry so what is it electrochemistry right from the name let's see electro and chemistry okay so you can see two parts electro and chemistry right so this electro it depends or it deals with the electricity right and then chemistry we know what happens in chemistry chemical reactions right so generally what i can say electrochemistry deals with the interconversion of electrical energy to chemical energy and how from chemical energy or chemical reactions we can produce electrical energy right so if i produce or if i supply an electrical energy how chemical reactions can take place and how from chemical reactions an electricity can be produced right so the interconversion between these two we are going to basically study in this chapter right so what is electrochemistry it is the study of production of electricity from energy released during chemical reactions so we know that during chemical reactions energy is released right that energy which is released it is being used to produce electricity right and the use of electrical energy now we are supplying an electrical energy to bring about chemical reactions so we provide energy that is electrical energy so that chemical reactions take place so both of this regarding this we will be studying in electrochemistry right so the first one i told chemical energy to electrical energy that is from a chemical reaction the energy that is being released that is used to produce electrical energy that is electricity so this first one chemical energy to electrical energy this is a spontaneous process now what is a spontaneous process yes do we need to apply any external energy to it no right spontaneous processes or spontaneous reactions they happen on their own right so yes the chemical energy that is the chemical reactions happen on their own and whatever energy is produced into it is converted into electrical energy so such uh, reactions that is from chemical reactions we produce electricity those come under spontaneous processes right yes because we need not provide any external energy right now electrical energy to chemical energy right electrical energy the electricity is being provided that is externally it is being provided so that the chemical reactions take place right so such processes will be non spontaneous right they do not happen on their own the electricity is being provided so that the chemical reactions takes place right so such reactions or such processes are called as non spontaneous reaction so overall we will be studying about how chemical energy is being converted in electrical energy that is a spontaneous process and how electrical energy is being converted into chemical energy which is a non spontaneous process okay so i hope the introduction about electrochemistry is clear right so as i said we will be studying about redox reactions right so in the electrochemistry chapter what and all reactions that you are going to study it is all based on redox right redox reactions do you remember what is redox reaction so let's begin from the beginning oxidation and reduction right so when oxidation and reduction happens together that is simultaneously we call them as redox reactions right so what is oxidation it is the removal of electron right so from an atom or ion if we are removing one electron 
one or more electrons we call it as oxidation that is the process is called as oxidation so what it is it is the removal of electrons from an atom or ion so let's take this yes the zinc metal or zinc atom from zinc atom we are releasing two electrons the zinc atom loses two electron so once it loses two electron zinc becomes zn2 plus right it lost two electrons right and it gave up these two electrons so this process that is happening here what is happening losing of electrons right so this process is called as oxidation now let's take Cu2 plus which is an ion right Cu2 plus ion it accepts these two electron right Cu2 plus is accepting electron and becoming Cu right it is becoming the metal Cu metal right it is it was in the ionic form it accepted two electrons and became Cu right so what is reduction then it is the addition of electron right to Cu2 plus we added two electrons so that you got Cu so Cu2 plus is reduced to 2 Cu, right? So, oxidation is the, yes, release of electrons or the loss of electrons and in reduction, yes, it is gaining of electrons or acceptance of electrons, right? So, when these two process, that is the oxidation and reduction, when it takes place simultaneously, we call such reactions as red ox reactions. The red stands for reduction, ox stands for oxidation. So, together redox reaction, right? So, a reaction in which both oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously is called as a redox reaction, right? So, in the first reaction, what did we see? Zn was getting converted into Zn2 plus and 2 electron, right? So, in the reactant side, Zn was there, right? In the reduction, what was there in the reactant side? Cu2 plus and 2 electron, right? So, the Cu2 plus, right? So, when these two reactions are happening, this 2 electron and 2 electron gets cancelled, right? What is that you obtain in product that will be? Zn2 plus and Cu, right? So, this overall reaction is called as a redox reaction. See, this part Zn is getting converted into Zn2 plus. Oxidation is happening there. Cu2 plus is getting converted into Cu, right? What is happening? A reduction is there. So, in a single reaction, both of them is happening. That is a reduction and oxidation. So, such reactions are called as a redox reaction. So, I hope it is clear. Now, moving on to the different types of cell that you have to study in this chapter. Yes, there are two types of cell that is electro chemical cell and electrolytic cell okay electrochemical cell and electrolytic cell so in electrochemical cell what type of reactions takes place yes chemical energy chemical energy is converted into electrical energy right yes so in electrochemical cells Chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy. So, chemical reactions takes place. The energy which is being released, it is used to produce electricity. So, such type of reactions takes place in electrochemical cells. Now, coming on to electrolytic cells. Yes, that will be the opposite, right? Electrical energy, electrical energy is getting converted into chemical energy, right? Electrical energy is getting converted into chemical energy. So, in electrolytic cells, we are providing electricity or an electrical energy so that the chemical reactions takes place. So, which are the two types of cells? Electrochemical cell and electrolytic cell. In electrochemical cell, chemical energy is converted into electrical energy and in electrolytic cells, electrical energy is getting converted into chemical energy. So, are you able to think of any examples or applications of electrochemical cell where chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy? Yes, batteries right batteries in batteries we know that chemical energy is stored right inside the batteries chemical energy is stored there yes so what happens they undergo chemical reaction and what is produced electrical energy is produced right because we use it for what we use it in our watches calculator etc right so all this are getting converted into what electrical energy right so these are few examples batteries yes that's a common example for electrochemical cell right so now let's start with electrochemical cell okay so we know in electrochemical cell what is happening chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy right so as you can see here the diagram it is an electrochemical cell okay so in this the whole of the representation that you can see the whole of it is called as the cell right 
and then what you can observe here there is two beakers which is present inside which two rods are being dipped right yes there is a zinc rod here which is dipped in zinc sulfate solution and there is a copper rod which is dipped in its own salt solution right so there are two beakers in which two rods are present so these this one that is the beaker along with the rod that is called as one half cell and this is called as another half cell. So, these two half cells comprise the cell, right? So, each of it is called as half cells, right? Okay. So, the first part, let's see, there is a zinc rod which is called as the electrode, okay? This rod is called as the electrode. Now, the zinc electrode is dipped in zinc sulfide solution and the copper rod is dipped in copper sulfide solution. That is a salt of its own solution, right? So, they are dipped in it. And now they are connected by a wire. Okay. So, we know that in electrochemical cells what happens? Chemical energy, yes that is the chemical reactions undergo and from that electricity is produced. Right. So, chemical reactions will take place in this electrolytic solutions and whatever energy is produced that is being converted into electricity which will pass through the wire. Right. Okay. So, if I am keeping a voltmeter here, what happens? I will be able to measure it. Right. Yes. Okay. So, that wire through it, the current passes. So, yes. Now, what you have to remember is the positive electrode. Right. The positive electrode is the cathode in electrochemical cell. The positive electrode is the cathode and the negative electrode is the anode. Right. Yes. So, as you can see here, the two electrodes are there which is dipped in its own electrolytic solution and there is a wire which is used to, yes, through which the electricity is passed. Now, you can see a salt bridge here. Now, what is the salt bridge used for? Okay. As you can see here, there is a wire. Okay. There is a connection between the two electrodes. Is the connection complete here? Yes. From here, the electricity, if I say the electricity is passing from here to here, right. If it is passing from uh, the copper road to the zinc road, right? Electricity, the direction is this part. Is it getting completed? Yes, we know that for an electric circuit, the circuit must be complete. Then only the electricity will continuously pass through it. No, right. So, in here, till, from here till here it is there. But is there a connection from these two electrodes? The circuit must be complete, right? So, it is not connected in this part. So, for that, to complete the circuit, we use the salt bridge. So, what is salt bridge and the details of salt bridge, what is present inside the salt bridge, we will be discussing in the upcoming slides. So, this is the electrochemical cell which is consisting of two half cells, right? Yes. So, now let's understand a specific example of electrochemical cell that is Daniel cell or galvanic cell, right? Daniel cell, we are going to see the diagram, the representation and the, the whole setup of a Daniel cell or galvanic cell, okay? So, we are specifically going to study about the electrochemical cell that is Daniel cell, okay? So, in Daniel cell, what you can see, there will be again two half cells. It is an electrochemical cell, right? Yes. So, in here, that is in the anode, you have zinc rod, that is zinc electrode dipped in zinc sulfate solution, okay? So, this is zinc sulfate solution in which zinc rod is dipped. Okay, that is what? That is my anode, which is the negative electrode, right? Yes, and what is happening in the cathode? This is my cathode, right? And what is there in the cathode? Copper electrode is dipped in copper sulfate solution, right? Copper is dipped in copper sulfate solution, okay? And then they are connected by a wire and there is a voltmeter in between to measure the electricity, right? So, and what else is there? There is a salt bridge as well. Now, what is the salt bridge used for? The salt bridge is an inverted tube which contains inert electrolyte like KCl, KNO3 which is soaked in agar-agar solution. So, the salt bridge, yes, what is the salt bridge? It is used to complete the circuit, right? So, this salt bridge is containing, yes, inert electrolytes like KCl. They are having some inert electrolytes like KCl which is mixed with agar-agar solution. So, inside the salt bridge what you will be having? Some inert electrolytes mixed with agar-agar solution. Okay. So, what is this agar-agar solution? It is used to make the uh, KCl that is the inert, inert electrolyte in the form of gel. Right. So, have you seen puddings? 
okay for that putting to get that consistency which is not liquidy as well as solid yes you get an in between consistency right so for that what you use yes you might use corn flour you might use china grass all those things right so agar agar solution is also used for such purpose so that if i am keeping it inverted right so this whatever it is present it shouldn't come inside the solution right yes so it shouldn't completely fall off into the solution so i uh, mix it with agar agar solution clear right now it maintains electrical neutrality between the two electrolytes so it maintains electrical neutrality between the two electrolytes that is an application of uh, salt bridge right and in absence of salt bridge a reverse potential difference is set up in the two half cells which results in breaking the continuous supply of voltage so if it is not there that is if the salt bridge is not present there a reverse potential is set up that is a reverse potential difference will happen there which will stop this electricity flow right so that is why a salt bridge is used right so coming back to our daniel cell right so we understood the application of salt bridge here as well okay so in the anode what is there anode anode what happens yes in electrochemical cell anode that is in the anodic compartment what happens oxidation takes place okay yes in the anode that is which is anode this one right so the anodic compartment what happens oxidation takes place in electrochemical cells in anode oxidation takes place so what is the chemicals which is present here zinc dipped in zinc sulfide solution right so the zinc what happens zinc undergoes oxidation it forms z2 plus and it releases this two electron what is oxidation losing of electrons right so zinc loses two electrons and forms z2 plus ions right now moving on to the cathode okay in the cathode what happens in the cathode what happens yes cathode if an anode oxidation is taking place in cathode reduction will be taking place okay in cathode reduction takes place so what happens is the cu2 plus ions yes it takes up takes up this two electron and becomes cu right it becomes cu right so in the anodic compartment what happens zinc is getting converted into zn2 plus and two electron so where is the zinc present this is the zinc electron right so the zinc electron is dipped in zinc sulfide solution so the zinc that is a zinc electrode undergoes oxidation and what it forms z2 plus and two electron so the uh, zinc undergoes oxidation and the z2 plus gets deposited or it comes into the electrolytic solution right so zinc it undergoes oxidation and the zn2 plus will be present inside the electrolytic solutions now now what else is there the electrons are being lost right the electrons are being released by the zn once it is oxidizing so the electrons will be now present in this electrodes right so zn is getting converted into zn2 plus which comes into the solution and the electrons will be in the electrode right now coming on to the cathode what is happening the cu2 plus which is present in the solution yes what is electrolytic solution here copper sulfate right so it is containing cu2 plus ions right now the cu2 plus ions what happens the electrons from here right the electrons will move through this wire right there is a connection here yes they will move through this wire and reach through the electrode it will reach through the electrolytic solution so what happens the cu2 plus ions they take up electrons and becomes cu right they take up electrons and they become cu which is getting deposited on this copper electrode right so i hope the whole reaction is clear for you here what happens oxidation takes place zn becomes zn2 plus which is given out into the solution the electrons is present in the electrodes and they move to the cathodic compartment where cu2 plus ions are present in the electrolytic solution what happens the cu2 plus ions accepts these electrons right and it gets converted into what cu right it gets converted into cu reduction takes place there cu2 plus reduces into cu which is getting deposited in the copper electrode 
Yes, so I hope it is clear. So my question is, when this reaction is keeping on happening, yes, it keeps on happening, it is proceeding, what happens to the size of the anode and size of the cathode? Yes, from here, Zn is getting deposited as Zn2+, plus, right? It is releasing Zn2 plus ions. So what happens? The size of the anode decreases, right? It becomes thinner and thinner. What happens to copper? Cu2 plus is accepting electrons and the Cu is getting deposited on this electrode, right? So the size of the cathode, that is the copper electrode increases, right? It becomes thicker and this becomes thinner, okay? So overall, what is the reaction happening here? Yes, oxidation and reduction is taking place. Overall, what is the reaction happening? Zn plus Cu2 plus gives Zn2 plus and Cu, right? So, this is the overall reaction happening. So, this is the overall reaction that is happening here, right? So, as I said, the electrons are moving from here to there. Right. So, if the direction of flow of electrons is towards this direction, what will be the flow of current? It will be opposite to the flow of direction of electrons. Right. So, the current will be produced in this direction. As the electrons are flowing from anode to cathode, the direction of the current will be from cathode to anode. Yes, I hope it is clear. Right. So, coming on to the next part, we saw how the setup is in Daniel cell. Right. So, in the first case, let us take, yes, the Daniel cell. And we know that the chemical reactions takes place. That is, oxidation takes place in the anode. Reduction takes place in the cathode. And electricity is produced. We are clear with that. Now, what I am doing is, and I am applying an external energy. Right. An external electricity is being provided. Externally, something is provided. Now, if it is less than 1.1 volt. Okay. If what I am supplying externally is less than the electricity which is being produced in the Daniel cell. So, will there be a change in direction of the current or will there be any change in reaction what is happening there? No, right. Externally what I am applying, it is less than the less than the voltage or electricity which is produced by the Daniel cell. So, it is less than means no effect will be there. The reaction will continue as such, right. So, what happens? Same thing, the electrons will move from the anode to cathode. Right? And hence the current will be in the direction from cathode to anode. The current will be in this direction. The flow of electrons will be in this direction. Okay, so that is clear. Now, if the external energy that I am providing, that is the external electricity, is equal to 1.1, which is produced by the Daniel cell. What is the voltage of Daniel cell? It is 1.1 volt. So, if both of them are equal, that is the external energy that is given and the electricity that is being produced, that is 1.1, if both of them are equal, then then what happens? Yes, the reaction stops happening. That is, there will be no current that is produced. That is, I will be equal to zero. Yes, if uh, the direction of current is in this direction, if I am applying an external electricity there, which is in the opposite direction, what happens? Right? They are equal. So, they cancel out each other. The current will be zero. So, the chemical reaction stops happening here. There won't be any chemical reaction here. Now, coming on to the third one. That is, if I am applying an external energy, which is greater than 1.1 volt. If it is greater than 1.1 volt, now what happens? Yes, the direction of the reaction will change, right? Yes, now what will happen? Yes, my zinc will behave, that is zinc electrode will behave as cathode and uh, the copper uh, electrode will behave as anode. Yes, earlier the zinc was anode and copper was cathode. Now what happens if I am applying an electricity which is greater than 1.1 volt, right? Greater than the electricity which is produced in the Daniel cell. Externally, I am applying more than that. So what happens? Yes, the direction reverse, right? So now electrons will start moving from here to here. So what will be the direction of current? It will be from here to here. Direction of the current will be in from cathode to anode, right? So, now it behaves as what? Right? So, now I am applying an external energy which is more than it. Yes, more than what it is produced. So, what is happening? Now, I am applying an electricity so that the chemical reaction is changing or a chemical reaction is taking place. Now, what is it? Yes, now this becomes electrolytic cell, right? Now, this behaves as an electrolytic cell, right? So, now, if I am applying an external energy which is more than 1.1 volt, the reaction itself is changing, 
right the direction is changing so because of this external energy chemical reactions are happening there so what is that because of electrical energy chemical energy is uh, produced what is that they are electrolytic cell right so when the external energy is more than 1.1 volt the electrochemical cell behaves as electrolytic cell so i hope this is also clear for you right yes so to summarize if the external energy is less than 1.1 volt no changes happens yes it will be as such and if it is equal to the external energy that is external energy is equal to 1.1 volt the reaction stops happening there won't be any current produced and if external energy is more than 1.1 volt it starts behaving as an electrolytic cell right okay so i hope it is clear now coming on to the representation of galvanic cell how you can represent the galvanic or daniel cell so what is the reaction happening in the anode oxidation right so zn gives zn2 plus and two electron right so it is in the solid form so in the electrolytic uh, solution what happens zn2 plus is being released right so hence aqueous is written here in brackets in subscript okay zn gives zn2 plus and two electrons it loses electron and undergoes oxidation so this is happening in the anode right now what is happening in the cathode reduction right in the cathode reduction is taking place that is cu2 plus that is in electrolytic solution right so that is aqueous is written here so cu2 plus accepts this electron and becomes cu solid right so yes that is what is happening in the reduction so that is what is happening in the cathode what is happening reduction is happening right so now oxidation and reduction is taking place what will be the overall reaction it will be zn plus cu2 plus gives zn2 plus and cu this is the overall reaction right so how i can represent this cell now okay how i can represent it i write this that is the what is happening in the anode right so now this is the overall reaction now i'm going to tell you how to represent the cell okay so first what you have to write is the reaction that is taking place in the anode and then you write the reaction that is taking place in the cathode okay so what is the reaction taking place in anode zn is can getting converted into zn2 plus right so you write zn first right and then you put a slash here okay what it is getting converted into zn2 plus right zn oxidizes to zn2 plus okay so this is the anodic compartment what is happening in the anode right and then i put double slash okay and then what is happening in the cathode we write that okay the reaction that is happening in the cathode cu2 plus is getting reduced to two cu right cu2 plus is getting reduced to two cu okay yes so first you will write the anodic reaction and then you will write the cathodic reaction so what is happening zn is oxidized to zn2 plus cu2 plus is reduced to cu so you have to represent it by the slashes and then yes so also you have to represent whether these are in solid or aqueous state clear right now let's do this write the half cell and net cell reaction in which the cell is represented as okay so the cell representation is given to you here so what is happening here in the first one ni ni2 plus double slash pb2 plus and pb this is what is given here so what is happening in the anode the first part represents the anode right oxidation so we know that ni is getting oxidized into ni2 plus and two electron right yes this part the first part is the anodic reaction what is happening in the anode right so ni is getting oxidized into nickel 2 plus and 2 electron right and what is happening in the cathode what is happening in the cathode pb2 plus ion accepts this 2 electron and gets reduced to pb right yes that is what is happening pb2 plus ion is getting reduced to pb so that accepts this 2 electron the 2 electron which is released by nickel it is being accepted by the pb right okay so what will be the overall reaction then what will be happening ni plus pb2 plus gives ni2 plus plus pb right so that will be the overall reaction right that is the net reaction so now coming on to the second one what is happening in anode anode what is happening cu it is getting converted into that is cu is oxidized into cu2 plus and two electron right cu2 plus and two electron now what is happening in the cathode 
what is happening in the cathode? Ag plus, right? Yes, two electrons are there. So, how many Ag plus ions will be there? Two Ag plus ions, yes, they accept two electrons, right? Two Ag plus ions accept two of the electrons and forms two Ag, right? They reduce, that is Ag plus ions reduce to Ag solid, right? So, what is happening here? Ag plus is getting reduced to Ag, right? So, this will be aqueous and this will be solid, right? So, what will be the overall reaction here? It will be Cu plus 2 Ag plus, right? It is aqueous. 2 Ag plus gives what? Cu2 plus aqueous and 2 Ag solid. So, here also you have to write like that, right? So, this will be aqueous, this will be aqueous, this is solid and this is solid. What should you write in the overall reaction? It will be solid here, it will be aqueous, yes, this will be aqueous and this will be solid, right? So, I hope it is clear when the cell representation is given, how you can write the anodic reaction and cathodic reaction, what is happening in the anode, what is happening in the cathode, the reaction, uh, I hope you are able to write it and how you can write the overall reaction also. So, if the reaction happening in anode and cathode is given, also you will be able to represent the cell as well, right? So, either ways, I hope you are clear with how to do it, right? So, in the next session, we will be discussing about electrode potential, right? And then standard hydrogen electrode and then electrochemical series, and then EMF or cell potential and then we will be studying about Nernst equation. So, I hope what and all we have discussed in this session is clear for you. So, that is all for today. Thank you.